Good morning. I'm Dr. Avis Jones Dweaver in for Roland Martin. Coming up on News One Now, President elect Donald Trump lays out his 100 day agenda in a video address posted on social media. And in an extensive interview with the New York Times, Mr. Trump answers questions on an array of issues, including neo Nazi groups and his controversial chief strategist, Steve Bannon. We have new details about the deadly Tennessee school bus crash and the driver now charged in those deaths. An update in the trial of the officer who shot and killed Sam DeBose. Family attorney Mark O'Malley joins us. And how does Thanksgiving and the Caribbean sound? Mm. Celebrity chef Robert Stewart gives us some recipes to spice up your turkey day. News One Now starts right now. President-elect Donald Trump laid out his priorities for his first 100 days in office. Unlike incoming presidents in the past who have held press conferences, Trump taped a video that was posted on social media. My agenda will be based on a simple core principle, putting America first. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, I want the next generation of production and innovation to happen right here on our great homeland. America, creating wealth and jobs for American workers. As part of this plan, I've asked my transition team to develop a list of executive actions we can take on day one to restore our laws and bring back our jobs. It's about time. Mr. Trump met with reporters from the New York Times yesterday afternoon, a newspaper he criticized during his presidential campaign for being dishonest and unfair to him. In the 75-minute meeting, he talked on the record about a whole host of issues. Mr. Trump gave a much harsher criticism than he previously did of this video showing members of the white supremacist group, the National Policy Institute, giving Nazi salutes in a meeting here in Washington last week. He told the New York Times, quote, I disavow and condemn them. On the fact the neo-Nazi group has been energized by Trump's election victory, he said, it's not a group I want to energize, and if they are energized, I want to look into it and find out why. Mr. Trump defended his appointment of Steve Bannon as White House chief strategist and senior counselor. Bannon has been widely criticized for running Breitbart News, which has been a platform for white supremacist views. Trump told The Times, quote, if I thought he was racist or alt-right or any of those things, the terms we could use, I wouldn't even think about hiring him. And Mr. Trump now says he won't seek charges against former Democratic presidential rival Hillary Clinton for using a private email server. But it's not easy to forget how harshly he criticized the woman he called Crooked Hillary on the campaign trail. I think she should be in jail for what she did with her emails, okay? She should be in jail. If I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. He told the Times, I don't want to hurt the Clintons. I really don't. She went through a lot and suffered greatly in many different ways, and I'm not looking to hurt them at all. The campaign was vicious. It would be very, very divisive for the country. And yesterday, Mr. Trump indicated that Dr. Ben Carson, who was a Trump supporter during the campaign, is being considered for a cabinet post. Carson said recently that he would prefer to be an informal advisor to Trump when he becomes president. In a tweet, Mr. Trump said, I am seriously considering Dr. Ben Carson as the head of housing and urban development. I've gotten to know him well. He's a greatly talented person who loves people. So joining us on the panel today are Dr. Greg Carr, the chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University, Ralph Cheatham's, the senior vice chairman of the D.C. Republican Party, and Gladys Weatherspoon, the managing attorney of the law office of Gladys Weatherspoon. Ah. Coming up. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Can you just, what do you think about this uh, sort of 10-point plan that, I almost hate to say it, President-elect Trump 
I do hate to say it, let me just be real, uh, <laughs> is putting out there. It's just very interesting to me that this is a plan where, you know, it's not mentioning those main points that he hammered home during the campaign. He's not looking to lock her up. He's not talking about a wall. He's not talking about getting rid of Obamacare. He's talking about a, other, a lot of other points that his main supporters, I don't think, are really keeping their eye on. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I mean, you know, first of all, you can't believe a word that comes out of the man's mouth. Donald Trump blew up the notion of being able to believe anything. You have a, a kind of episode sold of The Apprentice going on, running people in and out of Trump Tower. Ben Carson is Secretary of HUD. Come on, man. I mean, yeah, look, and, and you know, you have the governor, Nikki Haley of mm -hmm. South Carolina for the UN ambassador. It's a purebred joke. He meets with the New York Times editorial board yesterday. Today's New York Times, you have a softening from Thomas Friedman. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are actually t listening to him as if you should hear what he said. He said, if I thought that Steve Bannon was all right or anything like that, I wouldn't even think about it. Steve Bannon himself said he was all right. Absolutely. So it's like, Okay, guys, so keep talking. Don't, finally, last thing I say is on the op-ed page of the Times today, the editorial board said, you know, treat him like you treat Ronald Reagan. Trust but verify, except drop the trust. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what you got to do with this guy. Oh, my goodness. And Gladys, you know, it was, I find very interesting this, with, the, with him particularly. Uh, he uses Twitter for everything. I think it's very interesting that his initial statement was a videotaped statement. I have to be very honest. I believe it's because he does not have a mastery of the subject area. He knows not what he's talking about. So he can sit there and do take after take after take because he does not have the mental capacity to be able to talk off of his head on policy issues. So given the fact that we're now stuck with a president who basically is vacuous when it comes to public policy, Plus, he's someone who, quite frankly, gets upset at actors, gets very mad at people who are insulting him in any way, but has nothing to say but I disavow for white supremacists running all over the place. I mean, what do you think we're up for in the next four years? A mess. A hot mess. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something. Mr. Trump, what did you do? President-elect Trump, it's hard for me, I can't even take him seriously, so it's hard for me to say that. Because of the Twitter thing, it's ridiculous the way he behaves as the president-elect. But I think that it's going to be a disaster. I think we're in a mess. He didn't mention anything. The idea of him saying, I'm not going to charge Hillary Clinton yeah. is ridiculous because he didn't have the power to do it in the first place. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the yeah. idea that he's yeah. going to say, I'm going to do it in the first place and everybody believed him, and now he's saying, oh, I'm not. Of course you're not. You didn't have the power to do it. So I just don't. I don't trust him at all. Absolutely. At all. And Ralph, it's very interesting because he's starting out by talking about he's going to do all of these executive orders. And we've heard for years Republican whining about the fact that President Obama has been using executive orders when we know that the Republicans had a strategy to sort of stop passing laws while he was in office. So is he not being as sort of overtly dictatorian as uh, President Obama was accused of being in terms of trying to pass a whole bunch of executive orders in his first 100 days? Well, if you look at the executive orders that he's that he's talking about doing honestly most Americans um, sort of they agree with with what he's talking about doing but the 10-point plan that you mentioned he is going after things that can be done measurably immediately mm -hmm. now he's not that he's backing away and we had this conversation you um, know in, in the green room anybody who actually thought that Donald Trump was going to hire 100,000 brick masons to lay brick <laughs> and spread mortar across the southern border of the United States was foolish. Well, that, that wasn't going to happen. And anybody. About 50 million people today, right, right now, right? But, you know, <laughs> but, when, right, but when I heard that statement, I'm thinking, you know, metaphorically, a yeah. wall, whether it's electronic surveillance, whether it's drone surveillance, whether it's. I never, in my, well, nobody could he, ever thought that they would, he's so, actually going to build a wall. So you and think the people back, in his rallies that were saying, build the wall, were thinking metaphorically at that time? I don't know what they were thinking, <laughs> but if they thought that he was actually going to build a brick wall using red bricks and mortar, they were crazy. <laughs> you know, that, that, that was just yeah. insane. I'm and and also, just yeah. think about, you know, prosecuting Hillary Clinton. Yeah. As a nation, we don't want our executive to be driving prosecutions. Absolutely. But he can do what he but, wants. He said, what he said yesterday, he said, I'm the president, so if I do it, it's not illegal. That's with the business dealings. I mean, the guy, as you said, he's, he's oh, that's vacuous. Right. Absolutely. Vacuous. The conflicts of interest are just crazy. Yeah. And now his attorney general nominee, no, you no. know, that, come on. That's God. the worst. I Absolutely. Mean, forget all this sideshow stuff, the meetings. When you nominate Jefferson Beauregard Sessons, this guy 
is a racist. Mm -hmm. This man in charge of the attorney general's office. So all young, all these young people out here said, well, or anybody said, it doesn't matter who in my vote, whether I vote right. or not. Mm -hmm. Let's be very clear. If you out there smoking marijuana in a state where you think it's legal, this guy has the power to go after you with the full force of the federal government. Mandatory minimums. He's talking about now going back and reversing what has been done in the pre pre previous two AGs. These are the things we should be paying attention to. Forget but the also, side shows. But, yeah. but how many people know? And we had this. Who, how many people know who Henry Francis Hayes and Michael Donald are? Right. Michael Donald was a black teenager who was killed by Hayes, who was the son of a prominent member of the Alabama KKK. Mm. Jeff Sessions pushed and insisted that that be a capital murder case, and Hayes was found guilty and given the death penalty. Ralph, can we just wait, wait, no, 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 let me no, finish, no, let me finish, because everybody needs to hear this. This is an endorsement of Jeff Sessions, right? Because, now, I want you to take, he, are you he, endorsing he, Jeff he, Sessions he, as attorney general? Let me finish telling everybody the no, full no. story. Yeah, go ahead, if defend him, brother. you're saying he's a racist, defend let me tell him. you a little bit more about the go man. defend Jeff Sessions. When he became attorney general, I'll be clear about that. he assured that that death penalty was inflicted and Hayes was, in fact, put to death. As a result of that, the Alabama KKK was hit with a seven million dollar judgment, which bankrupted them. Are you is defending? So Jeff? now the question that, is, <laughs> if he's such a big are racist, why did Jeff, he do that? Are you defending Jeff Sessions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm putting the facts no, out no, here, and the people can make yes. their yes. own right. conclusions. Yes. Those are a f yes. those are yes. facts. Well, well, let me ask you this question. Let me ask: Is Sessions in favor of the Civil Rights Act? Uh, portions of it. Yes. Oh really? No. Oh, oh really? Well, what that's portions? What portions of civil rights do, do we not need to have? Come on, man. The world changes, uh -huh. and the world in 1960 is not the same world in 2016. Do not cite John Roberts in Shelby County versus Alec Holder, because that's exactly what John Roberts said. And damned if, in the since 2012, 14 states haven't changed their laws, including that state of but Alabama. The, but the question the the is that Come the world on, in 2016 is not the same as the world in 1960. Let me ask you this. And the remedies of 1960 well, may not necessarily apply in 2016. Really? Because people, I still see people getting lynched all over the place. It, now it's right. by the police. But let me ask you this. Um, is he in favor of the Voting Rights Act? The Voting Rights Act. Is he in favor of the Voting Rights Act? Sessions? Yes. He voted for it. <laughs> Everybody really? voted for it when they renewed <laughs> it, brother. Yeah. Everybody voted for it. it is but he, you, you asked me a question. Is he, I is voted he, for is it. he in favor of rolling back um, sort of the sort of the, the momentum that we had previously with regards to criminal justice reform? Uh, honestly, I don't know do where mean? he stands on Look all the, the issues Look of criminal justice reform. Record. Jeff Sessions I, I wants to extend into the maximum all the sentencing guidelines. He's going to go in there and do all. And by the way, Ralph, the Klan that he bankrupted, he said the Klan isn't so bad until he found out they smoked marijuana. <laughs> Oh, oh, come on, brother. I got the know. death penalty. Who, who, name somebody else in this country that got the death penalty for a Klansman who killed a black fruit. man. Oh, by the way, don't, don't, no, 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 don't, don't name, overlook name the fact. the other person. Don't name over, somebody don't else overlook who got the, the death fact. penalty don't over, for a Klansman who killed a black don't man. Don't overlook the fact that that makes him pro-death penalty, too, brother. I said, I'm just going to sit back. Yeah. No, 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 you're an attorney. Yes. Help us understand, what is Jeff Sessions, what does that mean for this guy to be the top law enforcement officer in the United States. First of all, I'm, I'm totally against the death penalty, regardless of who it is. So right. it's a problem for me, period. So well, that, to me, that's not and, a, and, and ooh, let's celebrate I, I'm anti-death penalty, too. Okay. So, okay. And that gets me in trouble with my conservative friends, because I'm anti-death penalty. Yeah. Except if you're killing the Klan, but go ahead. Right. I'm, <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, I pointed that out to bring, to show that there is another argument. People say he's, and see, this is, unfortunately, this is what Democrats do, and this is what gets, I think, Democrats in trouble all the time. The first criticism that comes out against anybody is he's a racist, he's a bigot, he's a this, he's a that. And then when that's there's a the counterbalancing what he is. narrative, then they don't no. want to hear the truth that this is what he did. Now, are they because they got the death penalty, he, he did get the death yeah, penalty for, for this racist Congratulations. Who the black man. Okay, so what? All he did kill, there was set the stage so he can go ahead and, and lynch a whole bunch of other people. Right. That's all he did. What, ha what has he done? looks good to you. you. He's convinced you now. You drank the great Kool-Aid. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I hate Kool-Aid. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, oh, my I, God. I, 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 I'm going to You're going to get disinvited to somebody's house. Oh, like Kool -Aid. we done. <laughs> well, let me ask you. I, I'm just curious. Since you've opened this can of worms, I'm curious. Are there any other redeeming factors? Mm -hmm. What else has he done for black folk besides getting the death penalty for one Klansman? I find it's really interesting that in the Bush administration, and I'm going to get back to your question, that everybody's asking, what have all of these people done for black people? 
Okay. What had Obama done for black people for the past eight years? I'll tell you what he didn't do. He didn't prosecute people for vote for voter fraud in Alabama when but, but he was here, but, but in, like those three old black people he did. And, and, yeah. What has he done? What, Why what did are Obama we even, do? to tell you what the truth, that's Obama. irrelevant. You We're looking at, I could, I could give you, no, I could give you a list, questions. I could it's give you a crazy. list, but the fact of the matter is we have limited time. We have a new president-elect, and I tell you, I'm having difficulty. I'm one of those not my president people. I'll just be open and front about that. But let me just say, let me just say, um, since we have a new administration coming into office, which I believe will do almost irreparable harm to the black community, I think it's a very fair question to say, what have you done for me lately? What do you plan to do? And is it something that's going to do, uh, that's going to cause more of our people to suffer economically and physically and actually cause more deaths when you talk about law and order and all of these things that he's talking well, about, stop and frisk? That he's laid out for black America is, I think it's a good start. You know, with, with school reform, with economic reform, that, that do you are see, tangible do you results see, that will lift the, lift the black community. It could, it will lift right. America, it will lift all of them. America, not just black America. It could be a, it could be a, an apprentice style commercial. Do you want to see Michelle Ree as Secretary of Education? No. Well, he's she's he's she's one of the people on the shortlist, okay. brother. Well, I know she's on the shortlist, but you asked me a question. She she is no. I would I would be very upset if Michelle Reed became the Secretary of Education. Well, well, we have a lot more to go because unfortunately he has a lot of crazy ideas about who else he wants to put in. We'll yes. see. Coming up on News One Now, authorities are trying to figure out who caused a deadly bus crash that killed five young children in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We'll have the latest on that investigation and a retrial for a Cincinnati police officer accused in the shooting death of Sam DeVos. The attorney for the DeVos family joins us to discuss the next steps in the case. For the latest news, stay up to date and informed on news1.com or hit me up with your thoughts on Twitter at Sister Scholar or at News One or on News One's Facebook page. It is 16 minutes after the hour. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> 